Hi guys, how are we going? Uh, today we're going to talk about animal health and disease. First thing we're going to look at is animal welfare and the five freedoms. Again, it's really important we know those. First one, freedom from hunger and thirst. That's just basic giving animals feed and access to water at all times. The second one here in the notes, freedom from discomfort, that they've adequate space and if they're housed at winter or don't know, there's adequate space, feeding space, that, that kind of thing. Just, again, they're their um, basic needs, like bedded, the straw is bedded uh, daily, so they're not uh, suffering from discomfort and stress. Uh, that kind of feeds into the second one, freedom from pain, injury, and disease. That's really important. That if an animal is sick, it's treated. One of the big problems there is lameness in, in animals, that it's not treated properly because, so maybe dairy herds and, and maybe in sheep, sheep farmers, they're able to move you know, but they're, they're not thriving and they won't be producing as much milk if it's a dairy herd as well. And that's something that came up in the, in the exam in 2023, um, the effects of lameness. It was, it was in sheep production, but again, the same thing can come up in, in um, dairy production or beef production. So it's important we, we know that. Um, next one, freedom to express normal behaviour or patterns of behaviour. That means that they're, so they're able to live as they would in the wild. Um, again, that's stuff with ad adequate ventilation space in the sheds. And then the fifth one, freedom from fear and distress. This is really important if you're moving animals. Because if animals are stressed, they actually release a hormone into their muscles. So if you stress an animal, especially when we're talking about pigs in particular, if you, they get very stressed very easy. If you stress out an animal before you know, bringing them to the factory or moving to the factory, that's released into the muscle, the hormones release, and it makes you know, the meat, the cut of meat, not as palatable as well. And you're going to have less, um, less payment, less um, price for your, for your meat. Okay, so that's something that farmers need to be really, really uh, vigilant of. Now, th the next few key terms and definitions, there's, there's lots of them here. Just again, you need to know all of those, but I've highlighted a few. The first one there is antibiotics. Now that was asked in the 2020 paper, it was a full question on antibiotics and again it's really important that antibiotics don't get into the food chain. So if you're milking cows, there will be a withdrawal period on if you're treating an animal for mastitis, um, which is a bacterial infection, there will be a withdrawal period of uh, could be three and a half days. So you know you cannot leave that milk into, into the tank. Again, a farmer, I'll talk about it later as well, a farmer Close to us, a neighbor of mine um, got four thousand euro fine because they left an antibiotic into the milk, and what happened was that was collected with the lorry. It was mixed with all the other milk, and so he had to pay for the full lorry load of milk. And it jumped, there was antibiotic in it, so it all had to be dumped, and it's a pollutant as well, so that's bad for the environment. Um, again, the difference between antibiotics and antibodies. Antibodies are white blood cells produced by your immune system. So again, their idea is to fight infection. Antibiotics then, it's like, for example, penicillin, it's a fungus that's used in antibiotics and it just kills uh, bacterial infections. So again, that's important. Um, just be mindful of that. Then just looking at direct co uh, control and indirect control. Direct control is when you're treating um, an illness or it could be you're treating a weed, you're, you're eliminating it. Indirect control are different practices so that farmers can introduce to stop uh, a disease from spreading, maybe fencing off areas where there's water, things like liver fluke can kind of live there then and complete their life cycle. And I suppose in, in um, I suppose in, when we're talking about plants, you know, if you're using strip grazing, you know, animals will graze a lot better, less chance of weeds. So there's just different methods of direct is just using a chemical or maybe a dose uh, antibiotic to get rid of something, whereas indirect you're using different farming practices, maybe more sustainable for that reason. Again, that came up in 2023, there was a, there was a question on that, indirect control, an example, and direct control. Um, an endoparasite, again, this came up in 2023, the same paper. Um, an endoparasite, endo means inside, it lives inside a living thing. So again, some of these endoparasites, or well, maybe the digestive system as well, are, are problems. Um, eradic the eradication program, again, is something you need to be aware of. You see, I've, I've put in BVD, um, which is uh, bovine viral diarrhea. There's an eradication program in place, so that means they're going to just totally get rid of it. So when, you, um, when a new calf is born on the farm, you tag the calf, but on one of the ear tags, 
basically that little sample is taken and you're, you collect it and you send it away, it's tested for BBD. So again, straight away, uh, when calves are on the ground, on the farm, you will know if they, if they, have, um, if they have BBD. And if it is, it's reported and it, it's dealt with. So that's an eradication screen, uh, um, scheme even that's, that's introduced. And uh, just moving on now to, again, all these terms and definitions are important. I'm just highlighting some that have come up and that are more likely to come up. But again, you should know them all. Notifiable diseases. These are diseases that you have to report. It's the Department of Agriculture. Um, you know, by law, you're required to report them. Now, these ones spread really quickly um, and they can cause serious problems. And in 20, yeah, 2022 paper, you were asked um, just to name two notifiable diseases. And again, we'll be, we'll be looking at those and just as we go down. But TB is probably the most common one. There's a TB test. And any of you tuning into the, the farm visit to my dairy farm, we talk about, I, I talk about the um, TB test. And it's done every year. And it's just um, to make sure that animals don't have TB because it's a notifiable disease. It can spread really, really quickly. It's a bacterial disease as well. In 2022, then as well, the same question, you can see there, a pathogen. You have to know what that is. And anyone doing biology, again, you would, have, you would have covered this as well. It's a disease-causing microorganism. So there's so many different examples of them. They can be viruses, they can be bacteria, they can be fungi either. So again, disease-causing. Um, moving down then to, um, again, vaccinations. That was asked in 2023 paper as well. So again, a vaccine is like when you get a small bit of the virus, you inject it into the animal, same as humans, you inject it into the, the organism, and what happens is, yeah, the animal might be a small bit sick after it, but what it, what it does is its antibodies attack and kill the little bit of the virus. And what happens is it's remembered. Your white blood cells remember it. So then if that disease gets into the body, do they have the white, bo- uh, white blood cells to defend against it straight away? So that's, that's how a vaccine works. And again, there's lots of things we vaccinate for, things like pneumonia, BVD, vaccinate for uh, TB. There's lots of these vaccinations that uh, farmers uh, vaccinate for on, on farms. And the zoonotic disease, that is something that's important. Zoonos means it can be, uh, a disease can go from animals to humans and vice versa. So it's really important that you have to be careful. So that's some of the biosecurity met, um, methods for the farmer and obviously for the animals. And uh, I suppose things like maintaining a closed herd, that means you're not buying in new animals. You're, um, I suppose, keeping lots of people away from the farm because people can bring diseases onto your farm. So dipping the boots and um, with disinfectant before someone comes onto the farm is important. And you would have seen Ronald Murdoch when he came out to my farm, he was dipping the boots. So um, you'll tune into that if you haven't already done so. Um, I just going through some notifiable diseases that we said, look, there's a lot of these. Look, again, you need to be aware of all of them. I'm just highlighting I suppose the major ones that are maybe more important they're put more on with say exam papers and different mock papers and sample papers. Foot and mouth is one there that I've highlighted. Foot and mouth was in Ireland 20 years ago and it was a virus and it was a zoonose and it's notifiable. Okay so that means like people can spread it. It didn't affect the humans right but they can spread it from farm to farm. So it was really really important that, uh, that so farmers weren't going to marks were all shut down. It was a viral infection. Any animals that, that got foot and mouth, they had to be they had to be eradicated. So it was severe losses for some farmers who got it. Um, it's just one, I suppose, 20 years ago it was a, it was a massive thing. Um, it, it, and again, it was a notifiable disease. It is a notifiable disease. The other one is t- um, bovine tuberculosis of TB. And again, we we'll talk about that in these years. It's a disease of cattle that we look at. A full question came up on this in 2020. So it's really, really important we know that. We do a herd test every year as farmers for, to test for TB. And don't, that's how serious this is. Um, you can see it's, it's a good example of TB because it's a notifiable disease and it's zoonotic. So that's a good example. Just learn that one because that can get asked a fair bit as well. Name a, a zoonotic disease. TB is your example. Name a notifiable disease. TB is your example as well. So that's something just really 
to learn that the causes, the symptoms, prevention and the treatment um, as well. Again, stomach worms, lung worms, liver fluke, these are all these are all diseases, common diseases that can be asked as well. So again, I'm highlighting some of them, but that's not to uh, take away the focus from, from the, the other the other the other types of diseases as well. Um, red water, which is also called Babesia, again it was asked in 2023, it's a protozoan um, infection. Again, you see red water is basically there's blood in the urine, so the urine appears red, that's some of the signs. Um, again, uh, proper um, so biosecurity methods like that would prevent it on the farm. Now, moving on to dairy diseases. Now, a full question came up on 2023 on mastitis. It didn't separate between clinical, subclinical mastitis and summer mastitis, but it just said mastitis. So, things to note about mastitis. If an animal has mastitis, it's a bacterial infection. Okay, that's something to, to note. Um, it's a bacterial infection. How do you test for it? In the milking parlor, if you're making a dairy herd, you're stripping the, cow, the cows. That means you're assessing the milk beforehand. If there's kind of lumps in the milk, it shows that there's an infection. How do farmers know? How do they get data back? What will happen is the somatic cell count, so the SCC, will be high. That shows that there's an infection because somatic cell counts uh, being high. Somatic cells themselves are white blood cells. And if there's white blood cells, in one of the teats, in one of the quarters of the other, that means there's an infection there. It's they're there because they're fighting an infection. So again, how do you treat it? Mast uh, you treat mastitis with an antibiotic tube, and you basically squeeze the antibiotic up the teat because those four chambers are separate. So you could have good milk in three of the four teats, um, but in the fourth one, it could be infected. So you need to withhold that milk, especially if you have antibiotics in it as well. Um, again, that's that comes up, that has come up a fair bit in mock papers and sample papers as well. So make sure you know your mastitis. Um, there's three types there, but it didn't specify, it just said mastitis. So treated with an antibiotic, it's a bacterial infection. Okay, that's that's important. And how do you know you have it? You assess when you strip or what you'll see, what you'll notice is um, a high somatic cell count, which are white blood cells that are fighting the infection. Um, sheep disease, again, we need to know all these. Um, I'm just highlighting two there. Milk fever and grass setting. This can happen with sheep. It can happen with cows and cattle as well. Now, in 2023, milk fever um, came up. It said, name um, a disorder that where animals, we're talking about sheep here, when they suffer from um, um, a calcium deficiency. That is milk fever. Magnesium underneath has come up in many sample papers and mock papers. That's a deficiency in um, magnesium. So milk fever, deficiency in calcium, grass tetany, deficiency in magnesium. So it's yeah, really important to know that that comes up a lot and grass tetany hasn't come up on the new course yet, so I speculate that that will be coming up soon. Um, then again, just going through, again, all these, I'm going through these, I'm highlighting some of them, but again, just learn, learn them all. Um, then diseases of pigs, anemia, that's one that humans can get as well. If um, a pig, which is a monogastric, similar to humans, suffer from anemia, they're, they're not producing as much uh, hemoglobin, so therefore they're not producing as much red blood cells to carry oxygen. Why does that happen? It's a deficiency in iron. Okay, An iron deficiency causes anemia, the same as it does in humans, so that they need to get more iron in their diet, and that, 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 that will prevent it. Um, just finishing off here then, like the reason when we're talking about antibiotic resistance then, this is something that's become really important, not just in animals but in humans, that you're administering the correct antibiotic to the correct animals and you're giving the full course of the antibiotic. So what will happen is if you, you see an animal is better after, you might have to inject the animal for five days and you see after three days of injection the animals are fine you're saying you might say i'm going to keep that antibiotic for another animal to get sick but yes the animal may be better but you won't have properly killed that maybe bacterial infection so what will happen is that bacteria does not that the bacteria survives it does not die and then it can replicate and spread and what happens is it will remember the the antibiotic so it actually builds up a bit of a resistance to it so 
filling out the full course of antibiotics is so important to, to stop uh, these resistant bacteria from developing. Um, so disease control, other than using antibiotics, vaccination, that's kind of a preventative method. Obviously good hygiene is another one there. Biosecurity methods, and talk about that below, but it's just that you're maintaining a closed herd, that your, your if animal is diseased, you're culling them from the herd, and you're not letting any people onto the farm, you're kind of keeping it, um, and if they're coming onto the farm, you're making sure they dip their boots and disinfect it. Um, again, I just had a note there, farmer, 4,000 euro fine. That was for antibiotics in the milk. I explained that earlier. So that's why it's so important that does not go into the milk, because what will happen is that went into the milk processors like the Adamore and Plan B and so on, what will happen is that can enter the food chain and that can lead to, I suppose, um, these resistant bacteria as well, which is a massive, massive problem. Yeah, look, that's, that's it just on diseases. Again, learn all of them. I've just highlighted a few. Um, and yeah, give that learning check and go.